Hi, I'm Eli DeGear. You might know me from Empire State of the Dead, Dreaming Purple Neon, and the most recent one, Bone Hill Road. Um, I'm also a vocalist, producer. I do kind of a little bit of everything. And we'd like to thank you for watching right now. You're watching the 13th Wolfman. Ow. Uh. That was everybody's the 13th wolf man and you know who i'm with me today i have the the starring actress for bone hill road eli de greer welcome to sit the down gear. eli the gear sorry thank you thanks the for gear. having me okay now it's it, i i watched it today uh it's a good movie i'm i'm a as you can see the name is the 13th wolf man aka wolfie i'm a <laughs> yep. huge werewolf fan so it's nice to see a, a new werewolf movie out with practical effects in it yeah yeah, that, that's really cool. I'm really glad Todd did it that way. Yeah. And I've heard that a lot too, that that people, like there aren't many werewolf movies. I mean, there are, but it's not one of that, the, the kind that gets like made over and over and over again. So a lot of people are happy to see it right now. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really weird. It's like everyone goes for, you know, it's like, oh, everyone makes a zombie film. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I love zombie movies, but it's like after a while, you're just kind of like, I mean, the plot's very only, similar. Yeah, there's only so many ways you can twist it, you know. Right. Um, yeah. And vampire movies love vampire movies, but you don't see a lot of them. You don't see a lot of them after Twilight. Twilight kind of killed the vampire phase. Yeah, we're just gonna skip over that because uh, Lost <laughs> Boys is my favorite movie of all time. Those are my vampires. They will always be my vampires. I like them more than Anne Rice vampires. Don't kill me. Uh, so we'll just skip over the sparkly stuff. No, I, I I like the more ruthless vampires too. I mean, uh, one of probably one of my all time favorite vampire films, you know, is Subspecies. I haven't it, seen that. What? I don't oh think wow! I Early nineties. It's, it's older. Okay, yeah. I know of it. Yeah. Early nineties. Uh, Radu is probably one of the grossest, most most brutal vampires out there. He kind of looks like a cross between, you know, Nosferatu from the 1920s with a yeah. long finger, with a long, he's got super long fingers or extensions, you know, but, um, and just the grossest person you could think of, because he doesn't mind if he drools in front of you or whatever. It's just, just so it's kind of like a werewolf, you're saying. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get to be involved with, uh, with this movie with, from Todd Sheets? Oh gosh. Okay. So, oh, don't ask me the year. Several years ago, um, he and I were asked to be panelists at Scaricon in New York uh, on Bank from SRS Center. So um, I'd actually messaged him, Todd, saying like, hey, I heard you're going. Do you want to like road trip or in the same area? And uh, he and Antoine Steele, which is that he's, Antoine's one of his main actors in all of his films. They already booked some sort of flight or whatever. So I, I got there on my own, but we ended up being on like panel after panel together and um, the whatever flight they booked, they had to leave early. Well, the two of them came and found me. I was hanging out with the people from Pieces of Talent, which is a phenomenal indie film. I mean, strikingly beautiful. I love that movie. So I'm hanging out with them. It's after at the end of the day and all of a sudden Antoine and Todd come by and me come up and they're like we're leaving but we, we were trying to find you we're searching for you I have a role for you if you're interested I have a few roles and I was like yes I'm interested and we just kept in touch from then and I think it was two years later we were on the set of Dreaming Purple Neon where I played Denise okay. and then from that then he offered me the the lead role in Bone Hill Road so kind of all snakes through there yeah uh you, you mentioned uh, some of our favorite people, Joe Stoffer and Christy Ray. Yeah, yeah. From Pieces like, of Talent. Like talent, talent. <laughs> I know that's in the title, but like their personal interior talent is like blows me away, blows me away. And David Long too. Just, oh yeah, I Cr love. Christ I, huh? Christy's like a like a member of our family. You know, she's been on the show many times, and Joe. Joe's I saw just, one of the episodes. Yeah, with her. Yeah. yeah. And Joe's just awesome, you know. 
and David, da- David's, uh, David's cool, but <laughs> I know, like, cool, right? Like, but I would totally yeah. hang out. With him. Yeah, awesome people, really. Yeah, that's that's very really cool. So, were you? I mean, you sound like you're a horror fan from the beginning. I've gone through a transitional. So I'm the kid from junior high, high school who was going to the video stores. This is like before Blockbuster, and yeah. we would always rent all of the horror movies, all of them. Like I watched them all weekend with my friends. That's the only thing I, I was obsessed with. Like independent, foreign, uh, j- just, you know, Sundance, that kind of stuff. Um, and then now I'm, well, for several years now, I've, I've kind of gotten back into it. I feel like horror horror has has really made an amazing um, comeback in a way. You know, it kind of, I feel like it had a lull that like the 80s horror, oh man, those are fun. I mean, they could get away yeah. with anything imaginative that you could think of. They put it in film. And then it kind of had that like pop lull. Does that make sense? Not, in, not, the 90s? The 90s lull, in the 90s, it was less horror and more of a whodunit thing. Yeah, yeah. And it kind of, it, yeah. I don't know, it went away. And I feel like now, there's a lot of really cool stuff coming out now. Barriers being broken, yeah. things being tested, I, I, and just the look of things. There's some some beautifully shot films now, the horror films. Yeah, a lot of a lot of really great indie stuff coming out. You know, yeah. I mean, we we see a lot of really cool major stuff coming out, but we we get to see a lot of the indie stuff, and it's like really really cool. Right. You know? Yeah. Hello, and and it, cool too, can you guys hear me? I'm sorry. Todd. Oh, okay. Hey. Hey. But you I look can't amazing. See. Look at you. Well, thank you. So do you. <laughs> oh, wait. I can't see you. No, I, I don't you? have a cam. I just have a microphone. Oh. Well, you're fired. <laughs> I need to be. <laughs> How are you? I'm I haven't good. talked How to you in a while. Too I'm great. Long. Yeah. Too, too long. long. You're right. It sucks. Yeah. I don't like that. We need to we need to fix that. Yeah, we yeah. need to remedy oh. that immediately. Yes. yes. Damn it. How's everybody doing tonight? Doing fine. Yourself? I'm doing great, man. I'm I'm happy to be here. Uh, we are glad you're here, man. I mean, it's just kind of like <laughs> kind of caught us off off guard, but that's fine. Uh, we're talking about <laughs> your film, Bone Hill Road. Bone Hill Road. Thank you for the tongue twister, by the way. (laughs) We do that sometimes. (laughs) I was explaining to them that it's a real place. Like, like you didn't make up, you didn't make a prop of that street sign with the intersection of Wolf Road. Like, you didn't. That's real. It's really there. Yeah. 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 It's real. (laughs) It's kind of cool though, because the whole thing about that, that just that whole movie is how long it took to get it to happen. And uh, that road had this old, I don't know, like a three-story mansion. And I used to love that. You know, it was like a creepy place. We'd go wandering around through it. And it inspired me to write this story that was kind of like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, only with uh, a family of werewolves. And it evolved over the years into what it became. And um, I have to tell you something, though. You know, when I first wanted to do it, I'm glad I didn't. First of all, I don't think I was ready as a director. Uh, I know we didn't have the money for the werewolves back then, but mainly, and this is going to sound crazy, but because I didn't have Eli, and this is the truth. Eli brought this to life in a way that never would have happened without Eli, if that makes any sense. Um, She and Anna, and Eli worked really, really hard on this, had this bond, and it brought the story to life in a way that before it was just a kind of goofy, schlocky, bloody horror film with werewolves. She made it into something so much more, you know? So well, yeah, I, 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 I mean, King Kong is not King Kong without Faye Ray. It's true. You know, I mean, so it, it's just, you, you find that person that, that becomes a muse or becomes an inspiration and it works for the movie. And it did. It did. It did. And in a way that you don't even know, like when we worked on Dreaming Purple Neon together, Eli and I, I knew then I was like, she can do this. And so that's why I immediately was like, you know, there's a few other projects we could have done. 
that's the one I was like, I really, really want to do this because I finally found someone who has the ability to make this character believable, bring this character to life and get the sympathy of an audience. And um, I mean, Eli, I've always been a fan because I remember the film she did with Eric Stanzi. Well, thank you. Thank you. (laughs) And I finally got to meet her in New York City of all places. I mean, we were an hour apart here or two hours, but we had to go to New York to meet each other. (laughs) Yeah. I knew immediately I could work with her. There was just something about her I liked. And uh, you learn each other's processes. That sometimes is a little bit of a hill. With Eli, it wasn't that much of a hill at all. And uh, once I understood where she came from as an actress, it helped me. Sometimes I was impatient because I'm a pain. And I got other actors screaming at me. Hey, Todd, I want to go back to the hotel. We, We all know that story. And I was like, well, I'm sorry, uh, we're not done. But when, when I didn't have that, uh, I totally was, was completely in the pocket and uh, completely in, in awe of everything she did and everything she brought to the film. And, and you know, love them or hate them, these micro-budget films are so difficult because you have so many obstacles and just getting a film finished is a miracle but with all the monster challenges we had and all these suits and the poor werewolves they could spend like seven minutes in a suit and pass out <laughs> so we have to get them yes suits. and uh, so yeah. it, it was trying and uh and a lot of stunts and a lot of action and a lot of crazy things going on and um i have to say you know do i wish we had more time and money of course But for what we had, I'm really proud of the film. And I'm really proud of Eli's performance and Anna's. And I'm proud of everybody, really. Um, You know, I think everyone did their best under incredibly difficult odds. You got something to be proud of, man. I mean, it's a a good movie. I watched, like I told uh, Eli today, uh, I watched it today. I'm a a huge werewolf fan. So, I mean, that's one of my favorite genres. And there's not enough werewolf movies out there. Agreed. Agreed. It seems like uh, it's too difficult. And I have to admit, zombies were much easier. <laughs> I mean, these these werewolves, uh, <laughs> yeah. we, I'm not kidding when I tell you these guys went through hell. We had to have ice packs inside and uh, everything uh, just to get these guys through an, a, a four minute shot. And uh, sometimes they'd swap out different people inside the wolf suit just so we could get the scene done. And we had, uh, you know, three really big big wolf suits and then we had two like lesser wolf suits and we had a stunt suit we had all this makeup and and um and eli you know i i tell you this poor girl went through hell we tortured we tortured her (laughs) and uh and i think in the end of the day it's worth it i mean I, i was pretty amazed when people were responding the way they were um, of course, you're going to get your trolls. And we've had our share, but yeah. um, I really, yeah. really, I'm really, I mean, it, the fact that a micro budget film like ours got in Walmart everywhere is kind of a surprise. Right? Like, Blew my mind. I, yeah, I was telling them that, like, I uh, went and bought all the four, like, I bought all of them off the shelf because, like, <laughs> when am I ever going to be in Walmart buying my film again? Oh my gosh. So, it's yeah. true. Yeah, it is yeah, true. It, it, it's crazy because uh, the micro budget indie film scene is huge. It's been huge for like the last couple of years now. And it seems like those are the ones that are getting put into Walmart and Best Buy um, as opposed to, yeah. I, I mean, sci-fi put out a TV show last year called blood drive. I haven't seen anything about them having a release on that whatsoever. And I thought that was a cool show, but mm-hmm. you know, you see, like like I said, a lot of micro-budget stuff or indie stuff is in there all the time. So. Well, I think with micro-budget, it's harder um, because you have to pass QC, and a lot of micro-budget films won't pass QC, um, quality control with these chains. And even with, like, Apple, you know, we had to go through a lot because Apple has their own way of doing everything and their own codex and how you have to master your film. It has to be to their specs and it ha- it's different than other people. So you're jumping through all these hoops 
you have like five different versions of the film that are all the same, but they're all tweaked. mastered differently. And, <laughs> all yeah. tweaked a little bit differently. Yeah, yeah, just for that particular company. And um, so it's really cool that, you know, we were able to get in the door like that uh, when in this day and age, the like media, I don't think it's actually dying out. I think it's being pushed out by people who are supposedly experts. Um, it's funny because they said, Netflix is actually making more money on their DVD rentals and Blu-ray rentals and video games than on their streaming service. I and that's because, that. yeah, this is yeah. like blowing me up. I just got back from the American film market and right. the word is, you know, everyone's been saying DVD's dead, Blu-ray is dead, but it's not. We, the collectors and the people, normal people just want to run out and buy a movie um, without jumping through the hoops. I, you know, it's, we don't all want to watch our movies on a cell phone. So uh, I think, yeah. So uh, yeah, what I was saying, I, I don't think it's really dead. I think it's just, um, I think a lot of people have an agenda to try to push it out. It's no, I, I don't. I don't think it'll ever die. To be honest, because as you say, you know, us collectors want want our physical media. I just read something like last week that said Netflix has been around for like, I don't know, nine years, eleven years, or something like that, and they still haven't made profit one from that from that from that service all the money that they put into it and they haven't made any well if they put giving all their money to you know disney or marvel then maybe they could quit spending all that money then you could have some profit yeah netflix oh, damn it shame on you netflix <laughs> well i, I, I know we're not going to get sponsored by them yeah. <laughs> what? I, as i said i know we have to get set up for the six o'clock show so um We'll just wrap this up and we'll do that. Are you in Pacific time? Yeah. Oh, well, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm all over. I, I'm, I'm up in the Seattle area. Oh, nice. I used to live in Astoria, Oregon. Oh, Beautiful. right across the water. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So if you want people to follow you, Todd, on social media, where can they find you? Uh, it's pretty easy. Oh, geez. Really? <laughs> I can still hear you. It's just kind of bubbly. It's so weird. Okay. Oh, that's clear. That's, that's better, clear. right? Maybe yeah. for a minute. Yeah. If uh, if you want to follow, you can find me on Facebook. There's a group of guys that made a Todd Sheets fan group when I was having my heart attack. And they, uh, they, they keep that going. I'm part of that. And also my own pages. If you see Paddington or Batman, it's usually me. And uh, Okay. Yeah. So, and also all the movies, uh, Bone Hill Road, Dreaming Purple Neon, House Forbidden Secrets, all those, they're all there. And, uh, yeah, I'd love for people to, to connect, say hello. And, uh, and, and I also have a Twitter. I don't do it as much. I got, Eli taught me I needed to be on Twitter. Yeah, Todd. So, I, so I'm doing better, but it's just not, I'm old school. And I'm sorry, I didn't know the times. I, I thought I was supposed to be here at seven, so, or seven thirty or something. I don't remember. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm late. <laughs> I think we worked it out. We're good. We're good. So, so Eli, if people want to follow you. Uh, so I'm pretty much everywhere. You can just look for Eli DeGear all together. E-L-I-D-E-G-E-E-R. And look for that handle on Twitter, Instagram, my Facebook page. Um, I got Snapchat that I don't use, but it's there. Pretty much, pretty much all the social media. It's pretty easy to find. So, sounds cool. And I'm gonna say this right now. You know, if you guys haven't seen Bone Hill Road, go out, go out, grab a copy. Whether it's in Redbox, whether it's in, whether you're gonna be there at Walmart, grab it. You know, check it out. It's definitely worth your time. Yeah, I, I liked it. So, but I, I'm probably the pickiest werewolf person out there. So, I, mean, <laughs> I, awesome. I have something I want to say real quick go before ahead. we go, and it's about you guys. I really want to tell you how much we appreciate you and you guys, all of you guys out there who are helping to keep independent horror and independent cinema in the public eye and make people aware of our film without you, we couldn't be doing this. Uh, honestly, yeah. the people who watch it, the people who are entertained, the people who help us and support us without you guys, we wouldn't be doing this anymore. And um, really we thank you with all of our hearts. I, I know I speak for everyone on the cast and crew of these films. Yes. 
all of our hearts and souls go out to you guys because really we appreciate it so much. Your uh, your support and, and your love, it, it's just unbelievable. And I want you to know you are important. You're very important in the grand scheme of everything. You guys are entertaining the hell out of people yourselves, so you know what it is. And uh, bringing us out like this, this is something that with all my heart, I really appreciate. You know, I don't think people give you guys enough props, everyone out there, uh, even people writing a blog, whatever. We've talked about this before, Eli, you know, yeah. you guys keep it going. You're the, you're the circle. And I want to thank you for that. Well, yes. Ditto. Well, yes. Thank you. Honestly, thank you for those kind words. I, I know from uh, myself and the rest of the guys over, over a wicked horror show. Um, this is something that, you know, we started a, a few years ago because I'm a huge horror fan. I've been a horror fan forever. And one of the things I want to do is I've always wanted to talk to the people that made the movies that I loved. So as long as you keep making those movies that I love, I'm going to keep talking about these movies that I love. You know, That's a deal. so, <laughs> so, so, so it's, it. it's, it's, That's right. So, <laughs> so, so it's, it's honestly, it's honestly a, a, a thank you that goes both ways, Todd. So as long as you're out there and you're, you're, giving us something that I want to see, you know, like I told Eli, anyone can make a zombie film, um, you know, but as long as you're, you're out there making something that you do and you want to do it and you're, you're passionate about it and it's, it's there, then I'll be there to support it, man. I love it. Awesome. I love it. And Eli, we got to talk soon because I got something brewing. That's pretty amazing. Mm. Pretty amazing. Do yeah. tell. Mm. I can't tell a lot well, yet, but uh, we're going to be filming it in different States. It's going to be oh, kind of cool. There you go. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's time to travel. It is. It sounds, I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so happy that you look so great. You look amazing. You're radiant. I love it. Thank I love you. it, Eli. Thank you very much. So uh I'm sure you for, do too. For, I just can't see you. Yeah. <laughs> for Eli for Eli the gear. Yes. Gotta write this time. Yes. And Todd Sheets, of course, I am the 13th Wolfman, and uh, I'm on the prowl. <laughs>